this vein. Look at this vein. Look at that vein. They all come into one spot, and it's called the coronary sinus. Where do you think the coronary sinus enters into? The right atrium. Yes. It's deoxygenated. It needs to go to the lungs. It's just like blood from the toe or the leg. So that empties into the right atrium along with the here. Who's asking me? In the back. Here's the two vena cavas coming into the same spot. Here's the coronary sinus going into the same spot. So everything deoxygenated back from the body, back from the heart, ends up in the right atrium, right there. Nice. Don't have heart attacks. Keep these healthy. Uh, okay, I'm not going to talk about this. I'll start getting nervous and feeling dizzy. So I hate it. I, got my, I did do my teeth thing while I was talking about it. I went to TSTC and did it for free. Nothing was free. I was in there three hours. Did everything. And she took my blood pressure and told me that it was high on the bottom number. And she goes, well, that doesn't matter because the bottom number is not important. I'm like, what? <laughs> what school did you go to? It's the most important. She said it was 90. And now I feel all weird. My shoulder's funny. <laughs> you probably just didn't know how to take the blood pressure. <laughs> Different blood. Same name with all the stuff. Just drawing a little pants here. They go out a little further here. Same book. Different picture. Right corner, left corner, circumflex, and then tripper. Doesn't matter what book you look at. Doesn't matter what person's heart on the table. They are the same. Now I have seen differences in this because this person's marginal is there. Another person's marginal might be a little further. Not everybody's exactly the same. But this is the same portion, the same way out. Backside, same thing. Different book, different picture, same results. Coronary sinus, one thing you have to know in the back, and the, and the posterior interventricular artery, same thing, no matter what book you're looking at. All right, change gears again. Roll, roll, and now I'm going to say again. Cardiac muscle. What a cool thing under a microscope. This is just a drawing of it. I didn't make my lab look at it because they were supposed to look at it last semester. I don't know if they did or not, so I didn't have time. But we're going to talk about why it's different than all the other. This is a chunk of heart muscle, microscopically done. And right away, I can tell differences. If it were a skeletal muscle, like this one from the bicep, the muscle cells would look pretty similar, but they would be like this. Cell membrane, multinucleated, and striations. And the cells would be super long, like in your leg, and always a bunch of new. That's a skeletal muscle, right? From my semester. Smooth muscle. Nucleus in the center, no striations. What's different about that one already? I see one real obvious thing in this big picture. It's a big, super big nucleus. It has one big nucleus in the center, so it's uninucleated, single nucleus and per cell. It doesn't have multinucleate, and it's not, they're not on the edge or in the middle. Where in skeletal muscle, they're always on the edge. It still has striations, these lines are the striations. What else about it? More obvious than that. It, that word. <laughs> it is. It, it, why? It branches. It branches. Now, if you ever have a skeletal muscle that branches, I don't want to know who you are. <laughs> never, never will a skeletal muscle branch, but cardiac muscle branches like a tree. And this one will come out and branch again. This one will come out and branch again. And it forks. It's totally different. One, one nucleus per cell. You can't see cell membranes here, but you just have to trust me. <laughs> they're, they're supposed to be this little line, but that one's in the wrong place. But they're single nucleus. You need nucleus. Okay? Another thing that you can't see on this that they have that nothing else has, is you need to know this word big time, is intercalated or intercalated. I don't care how you pronounce it. I've heard it both ways. Intercalated, intercalated disc. And only cardiac muscle has that. And it's, it's basically just a line in the middle of the tissue. And this is a cardiac muscle cell. It's just right. It just has a band right here between two cells. That would be an intercalated disc or an, an intercalated disc. How come that's not DS, DISK? 
That's one of those. Yeah. <laughs> Not a zoo zoo. No. On me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what does that do? That thing allows this cell to do the same thing this one's doing. It allows all the heart muscle to work as one. Now, if you did that here, oh my God. That means you do it. When you pick something up, you have to do what? If they all worked as one, what would happen? As hard as it could work. You want to pick up a little pencil, you have to do it just as hard as you do it. You don't want to be walking around real crazy. Right? Your heart, we, we can, I can use 10 of these cells, a thousand of these cells are amazing, depending on what I'm doing. I can go slow. The heart muscle does what every time? As hard as it can. Some people tell me, well, no, not if you're sleeping. Whatever. It beats as hard as it can every time. What happens if you're exercising? It just goes faster. But the heart contracts full force every time. See, I'm starting to get that heart attack. <laughs> How for 100 years can something do that? Can you imagine taking your bicep and doing this as hard as you can 80 times a minute? It would fall apart. This can do it because of these discs. Now what they do, they have holes in them. Now we can't say holes, we have to use the correct word. They have 